Good evening, everybody. My name is Coffee Break, and welcome back to the Coffee Cast Reddit Casted Edition. Where today, well, I guess it's technically not casted. I had this replay sent to me by a friend, but meh, whatever. I told him to upload him to cast it after this, so it's good. We're good. Casting with me, as usual, is going to be Sleeper Cells. Sleepers, I'll give you, you choose. You choose. Who do you want to introduce first? Well, obviously, I'm going to choose the friend that you got this replay for. So spawning in the upper left-hand corner, it is going to be the blue Zerg Mondo. I know I, you're really close friends with that guy, dude. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. Well, I'll take the actual friend in this one. We have B on the south side of the map in that 6 o'clock position as our red Terran on merry-go-round. And... I like that Blizzard's experimenting with three-player maps, and yes, guys, I know this is not a new map by any means, but I just started playing Ladder recently, so I'm just starting to get my feel for the maps. I like that they're experimenting with the three-player maps. I was not a fan of Merry-Go-Round. I think that they have a better one in the new season, but Merry-Go-Round did not sit very well with me personally. I think it's a little bit Terran-favored with uh, for drop play, especially with all of this dead space, though. Ew, yeah, no, absolutely, I agree with that. Um, do you know if Merry Go Round is still in the current season? It is. It is. Okay. In the, so we have two three-player maps in the current season. Interesting. That's. I, I like that. I like that. Like you said, I like that Blizzard is sort of mixing it up a little bit, not keeping with that standard two or four-player map mm -hmm. sort of standard. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit more interesting. I mean, they tried it. Oh gosh, what's was it in 2011? Like early 2011 with like test test bug and such. Oh, so I loved test Blizzard. bug. I loved Death Bug. It was what? actually a really bad map. It actually oh, it was awful. That and uh, Dual Sight. Yeah, Merry Go Round is very, very Test Bug ish. Uh, fourth bases are very, very difficult to take on this map. Let's bring that up real fast. The, you have two logical fourth bases. You have uh, this one right here. If, if we're looking at B's base in this case, the one just north of his base or the one north of his natural, and both are very, very wide open. And as a Zerg player, especially, very difficult to defend unless you're doing something like Zergling, Bangling, Muto, where you have a very, very fast mobile army. No, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, we do see back in, uh, now that we should talk about the game a little bit, back in Mondo's base, uh, he's just taking his gas a little bit later than, yeah, no, pretty standard, going for a little bit of a Zergling speed action. Uh, and B actually going straight up to factory, so we'll be doing... Shemhelians, or maybe a uh, mind drop. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna guess with B, probably gonna be a mind drop. Just kind of knowing his style a little bit, he likes to play very, very aggressive. And I was talking to him uh, yesterday. Yeah. I, I was playing a couple games with him, and he was talking about doing a lot of one base strategies lately, just for the sake of doing. You know, like he's not always a cheesy player. He has decent macro for gold versus gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he's been really enjoying trying to play these kind of cheesy, cheeky strategies. Uh, a lot of which I can't actually talk about because I'm teaching him some for uh -huh. MegCon next week. So, <laughs> I can't say too much here. Oh, it's a mystery. Oh, my. Actually dropping the command center and not going for a... Uh, well, I don't know. He, doesn't, he, didn't, he never got that second gas, so he couldn't really go for the starport, I guess. So, it won't be a mind drop. It's probably just going to be Siege Tank. No, that's a reactor. Uh, pff, I, I guess Widowmine Defense. Uh, no, it's got it's got to be it's got to be Hellions with that reactor. It's got to be Hellions with the reactor. I don't know what I'm saying. We're we're talking about the person here. I went against a player yesterday that made like literally a hundred lings in the early game, and somehow I didn't figure out he was going Zergling Muta. Well, like I, I felt ridiculous. To be fair, neither of us did. We were both going. We're like, yeah, he must be going ultras here. That's the logical. <laughs> I'm just idea. used to playing you because you go ultras in every game. God, ultras are so good though. Anyway, <laughs> um, I really like what you're saying a little bit ago about uh, how B's sort of been playing a little bit more aggressive or is learning a little bit more of the aggressive styles. Because especially at the lower to low gold to about mid range platinum. You actually don't see a lot of aggressive plays outside of like two or three things. You see cheese, obviously, in Gold League. You see those big timing attacks, like the two base double medevac timing or something like that. Um, but you don't see those poke forwards with the little groups of units. Like, for example, a couple Hellions, a couple Marauders, a few Marines. If you poke down on the map right now, he could definitely get a little bit of map control. Might even be able to do just a little bit of damage here. I was going to say. Who is actually playing very, very standard just now. Uh, has his Baneling last up, Zerling Speed's just about to finish. 
I was gonna say if B moved across the map right about now, maybe maybe just a little bit ago. It's almost a little late now, yeah. but he he easily would have at least been able to get a queen. And in the early game, that can really kind of throw you off as a Zerg player. Uh, we do see Mondo floating quite a few minerals. I I would love to see him actually lay down a third base, maybe. Actually, I think he's taking a ninja. He's taking a ninja third. He's taking a ninja third at the twelve o'clock right now here on Merry Go Round. That's so that's. I was gonna say that's an interesting call. I guess I. I guess I understand because taking this base right outside of his main base would be very hard to defend because it's so far away, but expanding south puts him so close to B that a ninja almost makes perfect sense here. Yeah, it, it also it comes down to the uh, the idea of having uh, mobile versus immobile armies. Uh, Mondo definitely going to have more of a mobile army. He's going for the Ling Baneling style, probably going to go up to Muta's as his layer is about to finish up. So he's going to be able to poke around, fly around to different areas of the map, try and uh, stop any sort of uh, pokes by B, whereas B's army... And you sleeper cells, you sound like you cut out a little bit there. But like you're saying, B's army is going to be a very straightforward army for quite some time. That starport, not even quite finished yet. So, I mean, it's going to be a long time until Medivac shot. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is pneumatized carapace. I didn't I didn't realize people still got pneumatized carapace. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's overlord speed. I mean, you yeah. want to get that, especially if it's Terran right now. Because uh, you've been seeing a lot of Terrans just do that. Uh... At the high level, you see the Viking folk, where you just make one Viking and just fly it around the map to kill Overlords. Mm -hmm. It's probably the most annoying thing ever for a Zerg player. They I mean, just pick off so many Overlords, or at least completely deny you map vision. Uh, it, it's just one of those upgrades, I think 100-100 if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, you just you should pick it up to the mid to late game anyway. Uh, it's good for map vision, good for scouting. It, it helps poke into bases, it makes your Overseers fly a little bit faster. I mean, just an all-around pretty solid upgrade. Right now, we're, if you take a look at that income tab, B is way far behind. Mondo's sitting up at 51 drones right now, just 35 harvesters of B. So I would really love to see him, A, get a second command center. He, he really has the resources for it, I feel. And B, I would love to see him just keep up with his SCV as production as he gets supply blocked here. I was about to say, that's, uh, that's going to be a lot of mutilists coming out here, I think, just because... Uh we do see 14, 12 for, um, excuse me, for uh, gas and minerals here. Yep, going to be 12 mm -hmm. lists popping out for, uh, for Mondo here. Let's look and see what does B have back at home to defend against this. He, no engineering base, so no turrets going to be coming up. He's got a grand total of about 16 marines here. Uh, 18 marines, excuse me. And that's pretty much it for his air defense. So 12 mutants are going to fly in, and they might do a pretty solid amount of damage here. You know, especially if B's, you know, not in his base ready to defend. Does really? B know about that northern expansion, by the way? He does not. I just wanted to check that real fast. B is going to be moving out across the map, though, and considering how big this army is for B compared to Mondo's army, I mean, there's really not any yeah. Zerglings or anything. Those Mutalists are going to have to stay here and defend, but they're actually going to be able to pick off a few of the Hellions before they even get over to the base, doing a nice little bit of damage there. In fact, a lot of those Hellions taking a lot of damage, not a single one up in the green. In fact, almost all the Hellions dying. So a great little pickup by Mondo there, but he, where is his Zerglings right now? He needs a lot of Zerglings on the map like right now just now spending that larva and getting a lot of zerglings but he's gonna lose a lot of these mutilists if not all of them to these marines he uh unfortunately be over stimmed there i saw him stim two or three times in that fight so he's not gonna have nearly the trade he wants here he's gonna lose all those marines and a couple of those mutilists will survive uh whereas these uh those marauders had a little bit of free reign but just not doing nearly as much damage as he could have Losing one of those medevacs with a couple of marauders in, it really does kind of hurt. But he did get at least one more medevac away. It's not so much the units inside as it is the medevacs themselves that he wants right now. As he's been pretty darn gas starved this entire game. I think he just, yeah, he just recently, he only has about 300 gas mined out of his natural right now. Just now establishing that extra refinery. I haven't really seen a clear vision where B's going yet with his build. I, I see that just now. He's, okay, never mind. Now I'm seeing it. He's just now getting his infantry level weapons. But I feel like that's really, well. really delayed. Yeah, Thor's just coming in. I think that's in response to those Mutalisks. And if you're going to get the Thor, I would actually love to see just plus one armor on that Thor. You just get one armor upgrade. And that does so much when you're going against Mutalisks with that splash damage. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we're looking, though, at this Zerg player just definitely, uh, definitely starting to push his way ahead in the economic side of things. Early on, he, he made a ton of drones, built a couple bases, uh, but hadn't really done anything, hadn't built any units, so that when B's attack came out, it had the potential to do a ton of damage. 
uh, because of the complete lack of units and the focus on economy. But suddenly, these attacks sort of fell on its face. It tripped and fell, uh, rolled down a flight of stairs, and just didn't quite get up to speed. So now we see Mondo uh, taking, uh, there's this one, two, three, five, six bases now? Five bases. Five, five bases. bases. I can't Yeah. <laughs> five bases starting to produce units has, I mean, look at his supply cap at the moment. He has 192 ability to make uh, to make units here, which is kind of crazy as we do see B's uh, next attack coming out. This one, however, will be supported by a siege tank and a Thor and uh, quite a few medevacs. Um, where I, I really can't see this doing much still. I, I really can't. There's just too many Mutalists and Zerglings on the field right now, especially if he tries to engage on creep. It just isn't going to go well. I'm really concerned and kind of confused as to why there aren't any Banelings on the field yet. He's got Banelings, or he has a Baneling nest. He does not have Baneling speed. Um, there come the Banelings. All right. Oh my go. goodness. That 20 Banelings. Don't, don't say it. Oh gosh dang it, Sleeper Cells. That's a lot of Banelings! So many Banelings! It looks like B has found one of these expansions here. This is just plain flat out going to fall. Mutalus trying to engage the Marines in the Thor right there. But the Thor actually trying to save the sea tank right now. Not target firing those clumped up Mutalus. And that means that the Banelings can roll in and do a pretty darn good number on the bio. I don't think that was the most efficient trade Mondo could have had. But he is going to clean this up in the end. Yeah, he will clean this up. Once again, just not a good No. Trade. No, he's not. Well, that particular, uh, that particular group unit is not going to clear it up, but the 34 lane is definitely going to be able to take off. What is that? Six Marines and a couple Marauders. Uh, oh, B! B! Finish that! Oh, finish that! Okay. Oh, gosh, that was going to drive me nuts. Uh, the only problem here at this point, though, is B is on a kind of a timer in the sense that he's still sitting on two bases. Does he even have a third command center? No, he does not. Oh, but he does pick up that Thor and manages to save it there. A nice little bit of Thor Micro there. Actually doing a pretty good job. Uh, B, he might have a little bit of a bank right now, but he is keeping up fairly well on his macro. Actually, as I say that, he slips and forgets to make a round of units here. But he does uh, have his 2-1 finishing up right about now here to the 1-1 of his opponent. He's just now establishing his third, which is pretty late, but at least it's here. And he just playing that out has more on the field than his opponent does. Yeah, Mondo focusing just a little bit too too heavy on economy and not really getting. I'm sort of looking to check his upgrades here. Looks like he's on one one. Yeah, the, the yeah, you can just hit the upgrade tab there, sleepers. Oh yeah, that is a thing now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> those mutalists did take a pretty good big shot from those stores, by the way. So that means that I mean, I don't think they would have won anyway, but that really just kind of solidified their fate. Be even backing into the wall a little bit, saving as much as you can from the zerglings that are slowly streaming in. And once again, I just don't think Mondo really has enough to be able to hold off. I mean, he's down by half supply now. This is this is just about as much game over as you can get without the game actually being over. Yeah, I feel like Mondo may have uh, kind of threw the game. Yeah, there's the not GG. Um, I feel like Mondo really threw that game here. He had a great, great early game, held off those early pushes with no problem at all, uh, and then just sort of fumbled and started like building extra hatcheries in random places, not building any real units, not upgrading, getting such crucial upgrades as, uh, oh, he did finally get banning speed at the end here. Um, his hive was a bit late, never really did anything with the hive. Um, no infestors to lock down the Terran, and just honestly not, <coughs> no units. He made, I think probably, in, in the course of this game, he made about 20 mutas and maybe 100, 150 links, which, isn't gonna be a Terran Bioforce. It's just, it's just not. Yeah, uh, just a quick wrap up here. I'd say that Mondo's big problem, yeah, he took all these great bases and he had the chance to get this really nice big economy, but the thing is, he never got his harvester count up. I, I know that I'm looking at the income tab now and he's lost he some drones at, uh, here. He was at 74. Oh, he was? Because yeah, when that attack, when that attack started, he was only at 60 something. He was at, I think, 63. He lost some then, because uh, I, I checked at mid game and he was at 74. Gotcha. Well, Still, I feel like it got up too late then, because I was, I was keeping a decent eye on that tab. So I, I, I guess just kind of get that up a little bit earlier, or or spend that larva and go for an attack, because a lot of time he had he had a lot of larva sitting around when B was getting ready to push in. You're watching that army coming in, just going, you know, like, man, if he just made, like, 30 Zerglings 10 seconds early, he would have held this off or something. That's actually uh, great. And on B's side of thing, I would just like to say, uh, get that third base earlier than 18 minutes into the game. Yep. And uh, while his harvester count did get there eventually, it took a long time in doing so. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Um, and as a last bit of advice, if you Mondo the Zerg, the big thing that now you now that you said it, I realized is he had no real good vision of the south half of the base. He has the one overlord, but he didn't really have any wings posted out. He didn't have control of the watchtower. He stayed really back in his base, which unfortunately meant that he didn't see those attacks coming early enough, so he couldn't make those links. He j well, he could have, but he didn't know to make those links. So just keep an eye on the front of the base. Start poking forward. One ling, so cheap, just throw it forward right into the, the death grip of the Terran army. Get a little bit of extra scouting, know what's going on. And that's the big, uh, the big advice from, uh, from Sleeper Cells here. I couldn't oh, agree more, know. Sleepers. I couldn't agree more with you. Well, thank you everybody for watching, and until next time, this is Coffee Break, signing out. Bye, guys.